Hello and welcome to this somewhat special edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. Uh, this is for Friday, July 2nd. Now, I mentioned that I wasn't going uh, to produce a podcast for Friday this week because of the July 4th holiday, but uh, I want to do a quick podcast just summarizing what we know for now about this Brent Nightmare vulnerability. And late yesterday, we finally did get an official statement from Microsoft about this vulnerability. So we do have a new CVE number now and also some advice from Microsoft directly as to how to mitigate this vulnerability. So first of all, the new CVE number is CVE 2021-3452-7. The original one was CVE 2021-1675. If you remember, that original vulnerability was patched with the June 6th uh, Patch Tuesday update. So Microsoft decided to assign this vulnerability a new CVE number as it's uh, pretty much a a different uh, issue than the issue that was patched uh, in June. Also, as part of the show notes, you'll see links uh, to various references. That's pretty much where I pulled the information from for uh, this uh, podcast. And let's start with the nature of the vulnerability. So the problem here is a function that allows you to add a printer driver. This is typically only allowed for administrators or print operators. And administrators and print operators are able to do so remotely. So if you have a remote print spooler, uh, these uh, two groups are authorized to add a printer driver. And of course, printer drivers, they are DLLs, they are code, and that code runs as system. The problem here is that due to a flaw in how they actually figure out who is authorized to add a printer driver, any user is actually able to add printer drivers. And this is what this vulnerability and this exploit is all about. A normal user is able to connect to the print spooler and able to call this RPC add printer driver function and add a arbitrary printer driver, which can then be used to execute arbitrary code as system. Now, the way the exploit that's uh, currently circulating is doing this is that it first connects uh, to the printer spool driver, then it downloads a printer spool driver via SMB. So you'll see an outbound connection from the vulnerable system to an SMB server to download the malicious driver. And then that malicious driver will be loaded at which point the code will get executed. From a detection point of view, you will see a connection to the printer spooler and then you'll see the outbound connection to download the printer driver. All of this will typically happen over port 445, but in particular, of course, with the outbound connection as the attacker is connecting to the attacker's SMB server, there are a couple different options that an attacker could use. There's also a potential of using the exploit over port 139, but uh, in modern systems, uh, port 445 should be the main target here. So how do you defend against this? Well, there are a couple of options that you have. Probably the most radical one is just stop the print spooler service. Of course, this will print printing. And uh, yes, there are still businesses out there that rely on paper and that will not uh, operate without uh, printers. Another option that uh, I actually kind of like is uh, to just uh, remove write permissions uh, to uh, the directory that holds uh, these uh, printer drivers. Now, this will prevent you from adding new printer drivers, but uh, existing printer drivers will still work and uh, you'll still be able to print. Uh, Just an attacker wouldn't be able to add a new malicious printer driver to that. So uh, that's kind of an interesting option uh, to uh, bypass this issue. One option that Microsoft offers in its advisory is uh, to just disable inbound remote printing. So this way you're still able to print locally, of course, uh, 
that doesn't really help you if the printer is only used remotely. This would only help you if you have, let's say, a printer attached to a workstation that's occasionally used remotely by other users. There are also a number of ways how you are able to detect exploitation or exploit attempts for this vulnerability. You may want to enable the print service operational event logging and then look for event ID 316. And there are other number of ways how uh, you are able to detect it depending on you know what kind of setup you have uh, on the network it's a little bit tricky to detect this maybe these outbound uh, smb connections uh, that would be sort of a giveaway there in some cases remember that this exploit first of all requires valid user credentials it does require access to port 445 to the print spooler uh, this shouldn't work across any kind of perimeter defenses. So uh, this is really a vulnerability that uh, will likely be used for lateral movement after an attacker has a beachhead in your network. And focus your detection a little bit on uh, those lateral movement issues. Uh, looking at it uh, just inbound, outbound is probably not going to do much good. Uh, you're probably better off just making sure that the port 445 is blocked inbound, outbound at your perimeter, which it already should be blocked. So uh, that's probably not the way to go for detection. Look at the lateral movement part, uh, look at uh, these uh, print service messages, and that's uh, more likely going to lead you to a successful detection of any exploit attempts. And on the same note, also the thing that sort of keeps uh, this vulnerability really from exploding is the requirement for valid user credentials. Um, doesn't mean that uh, you should ignore this. This is definitely important. This is something that you should patch as soon as uh, Microsoft releases a patch and uh, something that you need to set up detections for now and some of these mitigation techniques. Uh, but uh, in the end, uh, I don't think this is something where like, you know, now for the long weekend, of course, in the US, uh, you need to like, you know, keep a ton of extra people around for. Well, uh, that's it for this uh, quick uh, special uh, podcast. If anything else comes up, uh, we'll keep updating our respective uh, diary post for uh, this vulnerability.